Thank you so much for the invitation. And um, uh, without due delay, uh, as my presentation uh, touches upon uh, my contribution to the fantastic report that we just saw, um, its uh, final version, I will try to be, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, brief and just to capture several uh, main trends as uh, I think uh, mm, more details can be uh, found in the uh, in the report. Um, what is important uh, is to bear in mind that when we talk about the uh, radical right in Bulgaria, uh, there is a, a certain, uh, I would say, the different environment than the one that uh, um, we just heard from uh, Edith about the, the, the specific uh, Hungarian circumstances. In other words, I would say that if um, uh, we observe um, uh, an institutionalized uh, uh, framework for the uh, and political role for the existence of far right as an element of the uh, particular uh, political uh, regime in Hungary, uh, this was also an element that was existing for a certain period of time in the period of the three Boyko Borisov's governments between uh, 2009 and 2021. Uh, but uh, over the last uh, several years, uh, since um, the, I would say, uh, ongoing uh, peaceful um, uh, struggle for the new uh, face of Bulgaria, uh, the far right uh, obtained uh, a new face. It led to two very interesting uh, processes. The first one was um, a quite noticeable marginalization of the, um, I would say, non-parliamentary far right, which would mean that uh, uh, various um, um, uh, radical groups uh, and far right uh, uh, organizations like um, uh, uh, football hooligans, uh, like various uh, small political entities, uh, literally disappeared from the uh, from the political spectrum as currently. Um, the main uh, attention is concentrated over the clash between uh, the former Prime, uh, Prime Minister Boyko Borisov's party, GERB, and uh, uh, the um, uh, reformist uh, uh, parties that uh, created a coalition uh, known as We Continue Change Democratic Bulgaria. Uh, so technically, uh, I would say that uh, in comparison to Hungary, in a sense, uh, the the usefulness of the far right um, uh, decreased, and uh, it is uh, now literally uh, a matter of um, a fascination with the problem with itself, then with uh, obvious presence in the mainstream political life uh, that um, uh, uh, that uh, positions the Bulgarian far right. Nevertheless, I think uh, first and foremost, I owe uh, an uh, uh, a brief introduction when it comes to the varieties of uh, far right uh, in Bulgaria. Um, first and foremost, and I think this is uh, what is uh, most relevant uh, for us up until today, is the uh, uh, post-communist alternative for communism uh, that, uh, in a sense, uh, grasped uh, the, <clears throat> the far right narratives in the eve of uh, uh, Bulgaria's... Um, uh, um, uh, in Bulgaria's uh, end of communism, uh, it created, it constituted um, uh, um, a, a form of uh, far-right nationalism uh, linked uh, to the uh, former Communist Party that evolves in various forms and is uh, and can be traced over the last uh, uh, 30 years. Uh, I would say that in that sense, um, we can call this type of, um, of, uh, of uh, far right uh, uh, a mainstream far right because first and foremost, it never disappeared from the political uh, uh, spectrum in Bulgaria, but what is more, it evolved into various different uh, political formations uh, that uh, uh, that played uh, important role in Bulgaria's uh, politics, especially uh, after the Bulgarian uh, membership in the European Union, uh, embracing this kind of uh, 
uh, Eurosceptic um, slash uh, pro-Russian uh, narrative that will be uh, visible in various ways in Bulgarian politics. Uh, what is important if we are to, uh, without going into every each and every political party, we try to to capture them uh, and their evolution within the report, but. Um, uh, overall, um, uh, the, the current emanation of this uh, um, uh, post-communist uh, alternative for communism is the existence, presence, and very, I would say, vocal uh, anti-systemic presence of a party called Revival, um, um, uh, a party that uh, I will uh, touch upon uh, a little bit later in more detail. Uh, the remaining um, uh, three, um, uh, three, I would say, branches of Bulgarian um, uh, of Bulgarian uh, far right uh, are embedded in the notion, first and foremost, of nativism. Uh, we have uh, smaller, I would say, much more clearly anti-systemic. Uh, political parties like the uh, Bulgarian National Union or um, uh, its uh, um, next, uh, um, I would say, uh, versions of Bulgarian uh, National uh, um, Union, National Democracy. Um, uh, and uh, these are uh, formations uh, that uh, are interesting in their ideological sense because they are actually um, embedding their narrative much more in this, I would say, purely nationalistic without uh, um, the international uh, um, siding uh, uh, approach towards nationalism, emphasizing on uh, love to the nation and devotion uh, and acknowledging in every uh, foreign uh, influence uh, a threat uh, for Bulgarian um, for the Bulgarian nation. This is important to the extent that they reject both uh, Russian and Western influence. Uh, so in a sense, uh, they uh, fairly treat uh, every uh, uh, single uh, foreign influence. Um, they're, of course, um, uh, very marginal with... Uh, uh, several thousand members at best, uh, depending on the uh, elections and uh, and the political period, um, but they uh, they exist as I would say a, 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 a consistent element of the Bulgarian political spectrum. Uh, then we have uh, followers of Western subcultures, and here of course uh, we can uh, both uh, mention uh, numerous um, uh, small groups, uh, uh, quite often um, representing uh, subcultures such, such as. Uh, uh, skins, neo-Nazis, also quite often associated with uh, um, uh, football hooligans or constituting um, parts of um, uh, of uh, uh, football uh, teams, um, uh, ultras and um, and fans. Um, they uh, are important because, um, and over, although not currently over the last two years. Uh, they were used in various ways uh, during uh, Borisov's uh, uh, period in power uh, as uh, uh, groups uh, that were uh, uh, pursuing or uh, were uh, conducting uh, or serving various political uh, favors. Uh, so in that sense, uh, they were uh, considered as a, a quite useful a tool for um, uh, social for for uh, uh, triggering some social turbulences, tensions, emotions, participation in uh, various protests or the organization of anti-protests, which was uh, and is still considered to be an extremely efficient tool in order to uh, diminish the role of uh, uh, of uh, popular protests against the government. Um, nevertheless, uh, the last group uh, that deserves our attention is the existence uh, of 
paramilitary organizations. Um, they are also extremely marginal. Uh, I think that in order to be fair, um, I need to to, to mention that uh, um, uh, those websites uh, that could serve as a source of information show that over the last uh, several years, um, these websites were not being uh, uh, updated in any way, which uh, uh, well can uh, can lead us to conclusion that um, uh, probably uh, these formats were in one way or another suppressed by the uh, by the state authorities, uh, which doesn't mean that they do not have uh, new faces. What is interesting about these paramilitary organizations is that um, uh, they, uh, up until uh, the full-scale uh, uh, Russian aggression on Ukraine, were uh, not uh, hiding uh, or were even, uh, let's say, promoting the fact that they have connections to um, uh, Russian secret services, that uh, representatives of these the secret ser services allegedly participate in their trainings and they organize camps and things like that that um, train them. Uh, nevertheless, as I have mentioned, um, over the last several years, uh, there is much less uh, on uh, on that uh, matter in uh, Bulgarian uh, uh, media and uh, uh, public discourse. Uh, when it comes to the perception of the uh, far right uh, in Bulgaria and the notion of far right parties, I tried to um, uh, compare uh, two things. Uh, as you know, uh, since 2021, we have a, a serious uh, political uh, a period of political instability in Bulgaria. Some call it a political crisis, others call it a, um, a, a silent uh, political revolution or uh, an effort to change the model, the political model in the country from uh, um, a captured state into um, a, a, a liberal uh, democracy. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of this conflict, but uh, what is important uh, for us is that up until uh, these first elections of this cycle of uh, destabilization, which started in April 2021, we see hmm, a rather uh, a stable uh, representation of um, of the uh, Bulgarian far right in the uh, as votes casted for uh, political parties in Bulgaria uh, in parliamentary elections, uh, and then we have uh, a profound uh, decline uh, in support for far right. Uh, which was being uh, explained uh, primarily with the fact that it was the far-right coalition partners of Boyko Borisov who took enormous part of the blame uh, for, the, um, uh, for the political crisis and for uh, this uh, popular mobilization. So the far-right uh, uh, was, um, um, uh, let's say, uh, in a uh, in a defensive position over the uh, elections between uh, July uh, 2021 and October 2022, uh, but uh, this uh, vacuum was replaced by the political party revival uh, that. Uh, Currently, um, uh, is uh, uh, one of the uh, main political parties in the Bulgarian parliament. Uh, and, uh, what is important to know uh, is that um, uh, 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 this um, uh, political party um, is um, representing both uh, the openly pro-Russian and anti-European uh, narrative, drumming the drums of uh, of nationalism and um, uh, painting politicians as traitors and uh, um, openly claiming that the current Bulgarian political system is uh, steered by foreign embassies. In other words, that uh, what is happening in, in Bulgaria is not in the hands of Bulgarians. Um, the specificities of the Bulgarian uh, uh, radical right uh, is, as already mentioned, the mainstream nationalists um, that, uh, that are active participants in the political life 
what is interesting, they play different roles, uh, both as an opposition, as silent supporters of government. Uh, that was especially characteristic for the uh, Boyko Borisov's regimes and also as coalition partners. Um, <clears throat> what um, these mainstream nationalists uh, up until the end of Borisov rule was that they were rather monothematic and often pro-EU. Now, for them, uh, important uh, Plato, that was uh, uh, their uh, uh, main uh, uh, stock was uh, the uh, relations with uh, uh, North Macedonia and the question of uh, Bulgarian past. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have the the, the, the far right uh, radicals, uh, which are characterized by uh, comparatively narrow support. Um, the nativists, in that respect, as I have mentioned, are against all. Um, what is interesting is that um, they are questioning the status quo. Uh, they also uh, try to invest in youth organizations, although I have to admit that uh, uh, from my research, it appears that these youth organizations are uh, uh, rather weak or non-visible uh, when it comes to political activities. We could also see some of these uh, far-right uh, political uh, organizations organizing order units, something that was also mentioned by Edith in the context of Hungary. Um, we, we have uh, a similar uh, issue that I would say bridges the experience of these uh, far-right radicals as uh, the, 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 the presence, uh, the existence and activities of the the Roma minority are used as a justif justification uh, uh, for the um, uh, creation of uh, units that are supposed to replace uh, the state. Uh, of course, in, in the meantime, accusing the state of not being able to perform its uh, basic uh, security uh, and uh, safety obligations. Um, as I have mentioned, uh, what is typical for them, xenophobia, racism, um, uh, very uh, creative interpretations of uh, what means to be Bulgarian, uh, among other claiming that uh, it doesn't matter whether you live on the territory of Bulgaria, but uh, everyone who is not Bulgarian, whatever that means, um, is uh, considered to be a guest and as such, uh, in a sense, needs to be, uh, uh, needs to obey. Uh, the rules established by uh, uh, Bulgarians uh, mm, uh, understand that as these uh, far-right radical uh, uh, political organizations. Uh, last but not least, uh, they, all these units uh, quite often, uh, as I mentioned, were serving uh, um, uh, political uh, services as protesters or aggressors in order to create uh, destabilization. Uh, the most uh, the famous uh, um, uh, far-right nationalist uh, activity in Bulgaria is related to uh, the look of March. And you can see, uh, based on the flags, that uh, this is considered to be an internationalist nationalist uh, activity with representatives uh, usually uh, of... Uh, far-right uh, and radical extreme movements uh, uh, all the way from Germany to uh, to Bulgaria. Um, I wanted just a couple of words to mention about uh, the uh, revival political party, especially that we are in the aftermath of another round at this time of um, uh, self-government or local elections in Bulgaria. And uh, that gave us a certain opportunity to, 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 to compare the situation during the last parliamentary elections. As I've mentioned, Rivavol uh, turned out to be the, uh, the, the, the third political party in the Bulgarian parliament with 14% uh, of the votes. Um, uh, however, uh, the current um, self-government elections uh, show uh, again, a rapid decline in the support of uh, revival. Mm, uh, what is interesting is that it is estimated after the, these elections that the popular support for revival at this point, point esti uh, is estimated around 7-8%, which means that they, uh, within these local elections, where uh, what is an interesting trend for uh, far-right political parties is that 
this is these are elections that allow to accumulate the vote and in particular spots or places to um, uh, to play uh, I would say in proportionately larger role well th th these were elections that revival was unable uh, to achieve uh, which means uh, that uh, we should look for other reasons for the explanation of the phenomenon of revival uh, rather than extremely efficient or uh, well, structured, well-organized party structures uh, at local level. Uh, revival went through an enormous evolution over the last two years, uh, and it is interesting because there is no doubt, you know, the the nickname of its political leader is Kopeikin, so there is, uh, um, I would say, uh, the, 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 the connections between uh, him and Moscow are uh, quite uh, um, obvious, uh, quite uh, quite clear, especially in the narrative and the argumentation that is being used. But I think that uh, this political party is interesting in the context of the evolution of its narrative, because after the the, full, the Russian uh, full-scale invasion on Ukraine, um, it um, abandoned uh, its uh, pro-Russian narrative and embraced much more uh, anti-Western uh, and uh, nation-oriented nation narrative. Uh, so Russia is no longer the role model, but what is the most important is the is the uh, claim uh, uh, for uh, own decisions, uh, own uh, defined as decisions made by um, by revival, constant claims that every single politician from the current uh, political coalition, quite toxic one, but still uh, is a traitor and needs to be um, uh, uh, needs to uh, face uh, uh, a tribunal. Uh, anti-American, anti-colonialist, anti-Western uh, uh, narrative, and of course against uh, Euro. Um, uh, as I have mentioned, uh, um, uh, this is also now the political party that managed to, uh, to unify uh, all the different um, uh, smaller pro-Russian political entities uh, that um, that operated, I would say that it, in a sense it is a coalition of various uh, small groups, uh, including a party called Russophils uh, for Bulgaria, uh, led by a guy who is sanctioned by the uh, Magnitsky Act. Uh, so we can imagine that there are. Uh, various uh, for, uh, formulas of uh, political representation that are uh, that are there. Uh, uh, before I move to the conclusions, I just wanted to mention uh, uh, two more points that we also have in our report. Uh, the, the first one was uh, the legal uh, environment uh, when it comes to the uh, radical right in Bulgaria. And uh, from our report, the uh, conclusions are as follows. First and foremost, uh, there is a, a well-established uh, legal framework uh, that um, uh, on, on, on paper. Uh, secondly, um, uh, the Bulgarian definition of uh, far right of the Bulgarian authorities uh, rather concentrates on uh, uh, the notion of radicalization and radical Islam uh, than on the perception of the uh, far right as a, a threat to the uh, political system. Uh, and in that sense, uh, we can hardly trace any examples of uh, Mm, um, uh, open persecution of representatives of uh, far right in, in, in Bulgaria. Uh, that leads uh, to the conclusion that also there is a little attention when it comes to the activities of the far right. I would, I would actually be here even more provocative. I would say that, uh, and that's not uh, uh, only or solely a Bulgarian phenomenon. I think that uh, the perception or the need for existence of um, uh, radical right is considered in a sense as an uh, absolutely necessary element of the state uh, uh, as it allows for the 
uh, concentration and accumulation and signals towards other countries in the region, which also very much uh, use these kind of tools of uh, far right or uh, radical right uh, in order to send signals um, on their uh, aggressive uh, related to the past uh, uh, historical narratives that serve, uh, serve as a source of accumulation of uh, uh, political capital when necessary. Um, uh, secondly, um, uh, what is uh, worth um, mentioning are the source of financing. And here, uh, in my part of our uh, report, what I managed to trace was that, um, especially during the Borisov time, um, there were several channels of uh, streamlining funds from uh, the government uh, to uh, uh, far-right uh, political movements, as I have mentioned. Uh, either through uh, various um, uh, various funds, but most importantly through um, enterprises controlled by by the government or people representing the government. Uh, we also have uh, examples of uh, financing by companies controlled by Russia. Uh, we also um, have um, own funds um, uh, accumulated either from illegal activities or from legal activities, uh, among them uh, sports clubs and um, uh, various uh, um, sports services, including MMA, which is now extremely catchy among the uh, far right and serves as a source of, uh, I would say, a quite decent uh, income. Um, uh, said that, um, I would like to uh, highlight uh, that uh, uh, officially um, in Bulgaria, paramilitary organizations are forbidden, uh, but we have, uh, as I've mentioned, at least examples of several existing. Uh, and what is most, most interesting, uh, we could also trace connections uh, between these um, uh, par paramilitary organizations uh, on a uh, transnational, uh, regional basis between Bulgarian and Serbian uh, paramilitary organizations where the Russian influence also can be traced. Um, uh, said that, uh, um, I would like to uh, bring my uh, arguments to a certain conclusion. Uh, largely, the far-right organizations are uh, actively backed by uh, Russia, or Russia is present uh, when it comes to the uh, far-right in Bulgaria. Uh, the mainstream far-right participates um, actively in the political process. Um, uh, at this point, however, it is marginalized by the fact that uh, uh, the current clashes between uh, Boyko Borisov's um, uh, status quo uh, party uh, and its proxies and the um, reformist uh, uh, bloc uh, uh, searching for a uh, profound change in the Bulgarian political life. Uh, Far-right groups are frequently used uh, for uh, political purposes. Um, um, uh, we can uh, identify mechanisms through which uh, the Bulgarian authorities also uh, finance the far right. Um, uh, and that was particularly um, relevant for the period of uh, Boyko Borisov's uh, uh, governments. Um, and currently, um, there are uh, no uh, such indications. Uh, far right uh, related legal provisions, largely uh, second European standards. Um, and as I have mentioned already, Bulgarian authorities does not consider far right as a significant threat to national security. Said that, uh, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions.